Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is Coach Fury here and we are back with episode 2 of our Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2021 Let's Play series where we have joined a online league with human GMs and human coaches which I think is now up to about 100 or so nearly now in the CBGM. Um, it's looking fantastic. Some of the media that some of the guys have produced so far, other teams and stuff has been brilliant and um, really looking forward to seeing how that materialises. But obviously today we are here and we're focusing on, on our Michigan Wolverines. Um, we, last time I think we spoke on the channel, we, we discussed a little bit about spending some of our um, recruiting budget on things like the, um, the reports that you get. Uh, we've been through that phase and we've been through the next phase in terms of the camps and stuff, which has been off of um, off channel really. I didn't want to sort of bog down in an episode of that. I felt that we'd come back to camps and actually discuss that at the point that the camps occur um, and we can talk about which ones we've, we've looked at and stuff at a later date but we are back today with episode two because this is quite a key episode really in terms of thinking about our recruiting class um, and who we're going to really try and chase and look at and scout and have visits with and and chat to to hopefully try and you know get this team another good recruiting class for next season so before we delve into the actual recruiting and start thinking about our watch list and, and players who are interested in joining Michigan, probably we have to just quickly reflect in terms of the two um, areas where we are currently going to be losing players and that, that's why we've got a couple of scholarships open for this recruiting class. We are obviously losing Larry Beak, um, probably our best player, um, which is going to be a shame, but hey, that happens. Our six foot guard, who is just a bit of a scoring and defensive machine. Um, I'm really disappointed to lose him after one season, but that's the way it goes. So we are obviously going to have to think about bringing someone in to replace him. We do have Ikona for another few seasons. Um, he is a junior. And we obviously, beyond that, we don't have much guard support, really, unless the likes of um, Jojo Geeson um, develop, develops into some of this potential here that we're seeing. So maybe... You know, he might develop into a good prospect, but we can't rely on that. And um, he might get frustrated and transfer out anyway. So we've got to have an option there. So clearly one of our two scholarship options that we're losing, you know, here is we're going to have to get a guard of some sort. No denying that. In terms of the forward positions, I'm pretty comfortable with this. I mean, we've got a nice freshman here in um, Ilsla, Scott Ilsla. So we're not, obviously not going to desperately try and find ourselves a, 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 a forward as such. But... The other position we are losing is we're losing Keith Daniel, who is a, a senior who's uh, graduating this year. So my, my thought is that we do need to bring someone in in terms of front court, be it a power forward, be it a centre, someone who can sort of fit that mould. Um, we obviously have, we'll have Sweet, Sweet Wien for a little while, hopefully, if he doesn't declare or anything like that. Um, but beyond that, you know, I, I, we need that third guy, really, because, um, again, we can't really rely on the likes of um, Singletary, um, or, or Johnson really to kind of develop into what we expect. So we're probably looking at a guard and we're looking at a front court player in this recruiting class is where I see us fitting. But in terms of the uh, the recruiting class, I guess it's probably worth us uh, diving into that one now and um, and just seeing what's what's available, seeing what the actual class looks like. We'll touch on that. I mean, I won't go through the whole watch list with you guys and the whole thing of like that. We'll sort of leave a little bit, little bit of that mystery to when we actually get to the point where we are really chasing specific guys. Because at the moment, it's a case of we're going to cast with a very wide net, see what is available to us, and then we'll reel it back in and, and focus on those um, two scholarship offers that we have available. So let's dive in. We have a, a nice team budget of 49000 which is which is pretty good. I'm happy with that. You can see here we've obviously got no one on our call list at the moment. Um, we are in the quiet stage. So if we look at the uh, the key dates here, you can see the way the recruiting class works in this game is it, it kind of goes through most of the year up until we actually start playing games, uh, going through what is called a quiet period where you're just looking and you're just you know calling recruits, watching film, basically trying to get a feel of who's good, who's not, who you'd want, um, host visits, you know, you know, bringing them in, showing them around the campus, you know, getting them, trying to entice them into into coming here. And then the evaluation period, you've obviously got that plus you're watching uh, live games because the players are actually playing in high school, which is fantastic. I love that option. I love that feel of actually you're going and watching a high school game and um, really seeing what the players are like. And you carry on obviously calling. Contact period is then when you, that's the crucial period. It's when we start visiting them at home and we start pitching to them why they should come to Michigan. So we'll, we'll obviously concentrate on that when we get there. 
Um, and then obviously you have the dead period. And then basically the idea is that we'll build our way through until sort of November, where hopefully we'll get some early signings. But for this purpose of this video, let's go in and have a look and see who's actually interested in joining us. So this is everyone in the Midwest region who's available. I'm, I'm going to ignore that for now. Let's just go national region. I just want to see who the top recruits are, to be perfectly honest with you, and and just see uh, where, where these things fit. So in terms of the very top recruit here, we have Callie Jones, a centre, who we, we don't know whether he's interested in us. We obviously didn't buy the report, so we don't necessarily know. So we'll have to try and get a feeler out. You know, it says here at the moment that he is cool interest on us, which is fantastic. That's a great start, to be honest with you. Uh, the league itself has something called brutal recruiting on, which is like meant to be the most difficult recruiting, um, you know, recruiting ability that, that you can possibly have in this game to try and really make it really challenging to us as, as human GMs. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. But, you know, interestingly, that when we look nationally, we've got a lot of people interested in us. And it's, it's probably not surprising given where Michigan is in, in terms of we are a top, you know, top 20 team in, in the nation. So rightfully so, we should be able to draw in different recruits, you know, who are, you know, elite, elite players. Some of these might be one and done guys. Some of them might be four year guys. We don't know yet. But so Kelly Jones is the number one prospect. We don't know a lot about him apart from the fact he puts up absolutely insane numbers at high school. He's six foot 10, 275 pounds. Looks like a bit of a machine when we when we look at this. Uh, in terms of the second recruit, we have uh, Dan McRae, who is the second person in this, in this class. You can see here, because he is in the Midwest region, we do we do have a uh, you know a, a top ten schools list because that's one of the things. If you buy the, I think it's called the Gold Class, um, the Gold Class uh, report, you do see the top tens and you see more of that until you know that's really gives you quite a nice little advantage early on because you can see where, whether you're actually in there. So we are ranked fourth at the moment, which is, is awesome. So it's really cool to see that the top two guys in, in terms of the overalls, um, a, a centre and, a, and a, a point guard, are both interested in us. We obviously don't know Khalid Jones how much he's interested, but for McRae, we are number four on the list. Um, Wisconsin, Marquette, Illinois, and then us. And it's fantastic to see that Ohio are below us. For those of you who have been watching some of the, the uh, Discord chat, uh, we'll know that I know um, Adam Rizzo very well from our CSFL league. So uh, going to be a bit of friendly uh, rivalry there, I think, um, as we go through this recruiting class. So in terms of the number three prospect, we've got Mike Jacobson. Again, we don't know a great deal about him. Um, national position number three, got good numbers. Six foot three, which is interesting. He's quite, I'd say he's quite undersized for a small forward. Um, personally, I probably would never play him at small forward at that, at that height. He'd go back in sort of the, the backcourt positions, but uh, interesting. We have got a lot of guys who have got cool interest though in terms of the top top ten, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got Kurt Linney, who is a uh, he's a small forward, six for eight. Um, we are number two on his list, so we we you know some of these top prospects, we we have a pretty good chance um, early on to to get ourselves in there and then try and mix it up with some of these big guys in in our our region and, and, and nationally as well. So we don't know again a great deal about him at the moment, but we just know where we fit on the list. Uh, we've got obviously Nick Burris. It looks like our Midwest region is having a lot of top recruits this year. We are eighth on his list. Um, we are behind a whole stack of pretty much marquee teams. Butler there, who obviously won the top teams as well. Uh, Nick Tohoy, Tohoy, Tohoy. We don't know a lot about him because he's over in Texas. Um, but, you know, interest is cool. So maybe we're in his top 10. Um, that, that would be cool. Uh, Bernie Newton. Again, we don't know a great deal about him. Uh, he puts up some nice numbers though. He's a, definitely a scorer. Um, 23 points per game in high school is pretty cool. So uh, then we've got Dion Clark, we, who has no interest in us. Um, although he's in the Midwest region, he has a. Is in the Midwest? Yeah, he's in the Midwest. Uh, he has no interest in us, probably because um, we already have a pretty elite small forward. Uh, Jerron Jennings, we are six on his list. Uh, that's cool to see. And then we'll find out the top 10 with Vic Judd who we know nothing about. So I think the obvious thing here is obviously we are going to try and create a bit of a watch list going. But in terms of the uh, the film, we can obviously watch film and start to get some player ratings. So I think we'll, we won't do that for the top 10. I don't want to necessarily ruin that for the people at the moment who might want to obviously delve into those. But uh, we'll, we'll we move our way over to uh, the our region, if I can remember where that is. It's over here. So the Midwest region, 
obviously, like I said, we've got the full um, scouting sort of book for this report for this area. So we do see a bit more detail. You can see here, there's those are sort of top guys that we've already talked about in terms of their overall rank. Uh, then got a whole host of guys who are not interested in us, which is pretty surprising actually. But there we go. Not everyone's going to be interested in coming to Michigan, especially guys who have Michigan State on their list. They're obviously not going to be interested. Uh, but in, below that, we've obviously got a fair few set of prospects here. I think what we'll do is we'll just pick one of these guys and we'll just uh, have a little look into them. So one of the guys that I'm interested in understanding a little bit more about is this guy here. So Dwayne Ward is a six foot ten power forward. He has some pretty good stats. He looks like he's a double double. Probably not an elite, any, a scorer of any type. But we, what we'll do is we will certainly add him to our watch list. Um, and then we will probably just pay to watch some film of his. And let's have a little look and see how he looks at when we run the uh, the next point of the uh, the sim here. We'll see a bit more in terms of his uh, his ratings, I believe. Yep. So we won't see them at the moment, but we'll obviously we'll see that next time. So that's how we are looking. I mean, in terms of prospects, I guess the good thing that we can point out here is that we have a lot of national top ranking guys that are interested in us. And in terms of our Midwest region, again, we have a whole host of pro prospects here. We will obviously dive into this a lot more in the uh, in the coming um, coming episodes, um, but I wanted to keep this one fairly short and fairly sweet, really, and just sort of focus on some of the top guys and, and in terms of who we're going to be looking at. You know, who's got interest in us? So we'll go back to the uh, the national area, national region. Um, so I wonder if I put the okay, yeah. So we can obviously just go back here. We can. This is obviously the, the Midwest region, but we'll go back to our national region, um, you know, the whole nation, whole nation. Um, I guess one thing we should probably actually do um, before we do this, I was just gonna, we'll, we'll go back to the international region. because I'm just I'm just curious to see who's on there and if anyone has any interest in us. So obviously we don't know the interest about them. There is some interesting prospects. We have John Cooper from England, actually. That's that's cool. That'd be cool to get an English prospect. Obviously, that's I'm from the UK, so that'd be quite fun to uh, recruit a an English guy in. <laughs> Slowly, we're getting some guys in the college in the college scene over the past few years, but um, you know, we don't have anyone who's like a top prospect. He looks like a four star prospect, so he he could be pretty good. Um, we'll go back to the Midwest region and the report, so we can obviously see the stars. I think that's the other thing you can see in terms of the gold report. Can we not see that on this one? I don't think. Oh no, we can. Okay, so I think um, we get a bit more detail on this, the gold report, but. What we'll do to just finish off this episode, nice, nice short one, is we'll just um, we'll just start adding people to our list. So one of the cool things that you have in the game now is that you have quick keys, and one of the things that Cards um, showed me um, about this, one of the veterans of the uh, the college basketball scene, is that they have these nice things now. So you can actually just start adding people to watch lists and such by just hitting the W button. So you can see there, Dan McRae's been added to our list. Linny's going to be added to our list. Burris. So, you know, when you've got 50 or so people you want to add on to your call lists and watch lists, um, it's pretty cool because you can just literally work your way down and just click in the buttons and you don't have to keep clicking back and forth. So that's a really cool feature they've added. So in terms of the recruiting, I think that's pretty much where we are. I mean, we'll we'll delve a little more into, more into this in a lot more detail in the coming episodes when we start actually seeing interest and how things are building up. But uh, for now, Interesting, just I think just to give you a snapshot of how you know how we look in terms of Michigan, I think we're going to be fairly in a fairly good place to recruit some really good top prospects over the uh, the coming recruiting period. Who knows though, because there's obviously human GMs in in this league, quite a few of them. We're going to have a lot of competition for some of these top prospects, but it's going to be a really interesting battle to see how that how that plays out. I hope you enjoy, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you have, you know, feel free to hit the uh, the subscribe and, and like button and, and throw your comments in. Um, I know the, the first one I had had some great feedback and it was really interesting to see guys from the league commenting, guys who are just interested jumping in. Always interested to hear your views. If you've got a thing, an idea in terms of what we should be doing in Michigan, please just let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll think about it and obviously try and, you know, try and see if some of those things can happen. But uh, yeah, we'll be back next time with the next episode talking a little bit more detail about recruits. Probably we'll have some of the summer camps as well, and we'll look at those in a little bit more detail. But uh, 
hopefully we can get those two scholarships to some two elite players and help build our recruiting class for next season.